With its small canals and wide creeks, the Mekong Delta in South Vietnam is as multifaceted and contradictory as the country itself. Covering 39,000 square kilometers, the Mekong River Delta is not only Vietnam's lifeline, but also the third largest delta in the world, after those of the Amazon and Brahmaputra. On the Mekong's northern creek, Around 80 kilometers from Saigon is Mai To, the capital of Tian Jiang province. Mai To is one of the Delta's most charming cities, an area with a long and colorful history. It was the Chinese who first settled in this area in 1697 and who were responsible for the subsequent historical development of Mai To. Most of the smaller islands in the Mekong Delta contain fertile soil. Thus, over the years, the Delta has developed into an agricultural area. The nine kilometer long and one kilometer wide Lion Island of Toi Son is an important center of agriculture. The small islands in the Delta are well known for their relaxed and friendly atmosphere. The journey on the region's many canals continues by the traditional mode of transport, the sampan, that is maneuvered by paddle at the bow. It is mostly fruit and vegetables that are grown on Toison Island. It also has education facilities for the local children and a small hospital. The waves have become noticeably stronger, a clear sign that we're approaching the great Mekong Creek of Tian Gang and will soon have to transfer to a larger boat. In the Maito area, the dimensions of this section of the river are difficult to discern due to its numerous islands and small canals. The next island is known for a particularly sweet and popular speciality as the people here specialize in the production of confectionery that contains cocoa and caramelized sugar. A sweet paste is formed into blocks, then cut and finally packaged as candy. The journey continues through small canals and past the coconut trees that provide the basic material for the popular confectionery that's produced here. The Mekong Delta has now moved on from the time when only a few highly adventurous tourists came here to visit this poor, war-torn country. In recent years, this socialist country has begun to open its doors to tourists from all over the world.
Vietnam is a captivating holiday destination with a fascinating variety of scenery. The economic potential of the country has now been embraced by many international companies. However, it's clear that there's still much work to do. In the Mekong Delta, poverty is never far away. The idyllic canals mask the hardships suffered by the local population. Here, the natural world takes over. The delta was first inhabited in the 17th and 18th centuries. The rural character of this region has remained more or less unchanged to the present day. Endless rice fields highlight the economic importance of the delta. Two or three harvests a year are not uncommon in the Mekong area. Life on the streets of Vietnam is far more hectic and noisy than that on the water. Even in the small cities of the Delta, there's a large amount of traffic. The modern Mai Tuan Cable Bridge now spans across the great tributary of the Mekong, the Tian Jiang. Vinlong, a city with around 50,000 inhabitants, offers a large variety of boat trips as the Gongso Jian flows from here into the Tianjiang. Another popular attraction is a small park on the Vinlong waterfront. But some of the most beautiful impressions of this country are to be gained by experiencing the daily life of its inhabitants. And a local market is a particularly good place to do this. The journey continues by boat to Vinh Long, the capital of the province and the center of the Mekong Delta. Hundreds of rowing boats are lined up along the banks. The waterways in this part of Vietnam are often just as busy as its car-filled streets. The main reason for the large volume of traffic on the river is Vinh Long's busy market that's also located on the water. In addition to agriculture, fishing also plays an important role in the lives of those who live on the Mekong Delta. Most of the excursion boats that leave from Vinh Long head for the same destination, the lush vegetation of the idyllic river island of An Binh. The journey to the island of An Bin travels through a maze-like network of narrow canals as the boat slowly glides past the tropical scenery. During the journey through the Mekong Delta, an increasing number of menacing clouds begins to gather above. 
We're in for a thunderstorm. Undaunted by the sudden tropical downpour, the journey continues. Such rainfall is common in this region. The rain provides a welcome though brief respite from the hot sun and the humidity of this region. The thunderstorm ends almost as soon as it has begun and the journey continues deeper into the forest regions of the delta. Dense forests once covered vast areas of the delta, but the increasing deforestation of the region has led to a drastic reduction of its trees. The Vietnam War also made its mark in the vegetation, especially due to the use of chemical weapons such as napalm. Fortunately, nature is gradually recovering from this. With its many canals, the enchanting river scenery of the Mekong has become a fascinating destination for nature lovers from all over the world. Numerous small towns appear along the riverbanks. Until the 17th century, this region of South Vietnam was almost completely uninhabited. The peaceful rural atmosphere of this area belies its bloody past that even prior to the Vietnam War was a constant struggle for survival. From the many lengthy battles between the country's various peoples and ruling dynasties, it was Vietnam's Nguyen clan who were eventually victorious. But shortly after this, it was the French colonialists who took control. This old Catholic church dates back to that time. Close to the church are some well laid out gardens whose design is somewhat unusual for this part of the world. Colonial times not only introduced churches to this land, the thriving plantations of today were also created at that time. Even though the extensive Delta region is renowned for its natural beauty, it also provides an insight into traditional Vietnamese culture. This elegant old colonial building whose proud facade is a reminder of the former wealth of its former colonial rulers is a good place to start. This colonial residence provides an attractive contrast to the traditional Vietnamese artifacts that are exhibited here. Vietnamese music developed as a result of both Indian and Chinese influences.
Both diverse cultures are to be found in the classical and traditional folk music of Vietnam. The country's traditional theatrical music and music of the royal court are part of Vietnam's rich cultural heritage. Thus, institutions such as this assure their future survival. Historically, the Mekong Delta is the youngest region in Vietnam. Up until the 18th century, the Khmer of Cambodia dominated this area. The exact size of the canals in the delta is not known, but it's estimated that they have a total length of 5,000 kilometers. The next destination on this journey through South Vietnam is to a small village of craftsmen. The inhabitants of the village specialize in the traditional manufacture of tiles. Each aspect of the work is on display, including the casting of the colored mosaics and the burning of the tiles. and a nearby family business produces mouth-watering coconut candy. Today, around 22 million people live in Nam Bo in South Vietnam, of which the huge Mekong Delta is at the very heart. In the wider sections of the Mekong that is also known as the Nine-Headed Dragon of Ku Long, ferries operate from bank to bank. The larger ferries cross the Song Hao Jiang, the lower river, the most southern creek of the Mekong, whose source is in Tibet, some 4,000 kilometers distant. Ferry boats play an important role in the daily lives of the local population. The largest and most economically important city in the Delta region is Kanto, that has a population of around 250,000. There are many interesting places to explore and it has several well-kept parks that are popular with both locals and visitors alike. There's a large statue of the famous revolutionary and statesman Ho Chi Minh, the founder of the independent and communist Vietnam. Following his death in 1969, Ho Chi Minh became the center of a personality cult that even today can be witnessed in the city of Kanto. Even though it is mostly smaller boats that populate the Basak River, larger ships that weigh up to 5,000 tons also anchor here. During the Vietnam War, this city was an important American military naval base. The 
The city is dominated by the river. Over the years, Kanto has gradually developed into the unofficial capital of the delta. Outside Kanto, the Mekong is around two kilometers wide and downstream becomes so wide that it resembles a lake. Due to its convenient location as the junction of several canals, the city is the ideal starting point of several boat trips. The dense jungle scenery has become an important refuge for many rare animals and birds. Boats travel past numerous picturesque villages. The majority of the population work in agriculture. In addition to corn, coconut and fruit plantations, the mouth of the delta is responsible for almost 50% of Vietnam's rice production. Close to Kanto, there are several popular attractions that can be reached by either land or boat. One of the most popular and famous of these is the town of Pang Hiap, located 30 kilometers southeast of Kanto. Situated at the central junction of seven canals is the floating market of Pang Hiap, an intriguing experience. The colorful antics of the various market traders are particularly fascinating. It's not surprising that this market is one of the most photographed locations in South Vietnam. In search of hungry customers, tiny floating restaurants make their way between the various busy market traders. Markets such as this were once commonplace. But today, the floating market of Pung Hiep is one of the last of its kind in Southeast Asia. Thus, a trip to Pyeong Hyap is a must for one and all, as tourism is vital to the future survival of this amazing market. The return journey to Kanto is full of incredible scenery. The magical light of the setting sun gradually sinks beneath the waterline as the landscape disappears into the twilight the spectacular conclusion of a fascinating journey across the Mekong Delta.